Hey, so a quick little update on this. In the uh, last video that I uploaded, I uh, went over this concept that I had at the end for what I call the Boolean check, where basically the game would remember uh, what exit you came from out of two possible choices so that you could reuse the same set of screens and have them like, lead to two different places. Um, as it turns out, that actually doesn't work, which is unfortunate. And um, I was told this by uh, Super Gamer Rob, who is a developer for the current versions of Zelda Classic. Um, he told me there was a problem with it. I decided to throw a together a really quick check just to make sure, and he's right, it doesn't work. So let's go over why. Um, let me look in ZQuest first. Here's the screen I've set up. It's pretty basic. Um, the one and the two don't do anything. They're just there to indicate like what state the room is in basically. When you step on the trigger, um, it activates all secrets on screen, so it's going to turn this A into a B. And then if you hit it again, the B will activate secret 20, which is an A. A activates secret 16, which is the B. Those always flip back and forth. Uh, whereas the trigger um, will turn into grass, and the grass will turn into a trigger, and vice versa uh, every time you hit it. So. If you look in the game, uh, that actually does work. You can activate it as many times as you want. The A will change to a B and back and forth, and everything seems like it should be fine. If you leave the screen and come back, it remembers that you activated it, which is great. But if you switch it back to A and leave and come back, it does not work. And that is apparently because uh, Zelda Classic uh, has a simpler way of remembering secrets than I thought it did. Uh, when you activate the secrets with a permanent trigger, um, it basically changes the room state to say, like, secrets active equals true. And if you flip it back, all it's looking at is, yes, secret active, true. It doesn't remember that you flipped it back, it just knows that you did it once, and so it's always going to keep it in that second state no matter what. Uh, so that throws off my plan, and that is unfortunate. So we're not going to be doing that trick, apparently. Um, possible workarounds are just doing what I didn't want to do and copy-pasting the screens every single time I want to reuse an enemy. I could do it. It would take up a ton of space, but I mean, I have 255 maps with 128 screens each. I don't think I'm really going to be hurting for screens that bad. It's mainly just a matter of like conserving space and being frugal with it. Um, so I might end up just doing that. Uh, other possible options are having every enemy kind of lead to a common dumping ground. Um, let me actually just illustrate what I mean in paint here. So I, I'm basically, the only reason I'm going over this is because I'm kind of curious what other people think. And uh, I figure I'll take some input here. So like, let's say we have, let me just draw a little field area real quick. So we've got however many screens there are, it doesn't really matter. Um, let's say in the field we have four enemies, and we're going to place them in various locations. So we'll have one of them appear, and then we'll have them just kind of like spread throughout like whatever. Uh, every time you fight one of these, no matter which one it is, it's going to send you to a series of battle screens. And when you're in the battle screens, when you uh, either run from it or complete the battle, when it sends you back, it's going to send you back to just one common location. Um, it doesn't matter which one you came from. Uh, the problem with doing this is it's kind of lame. It's just, it's a cheap way of getting around the problem. And, uh, Let's say you want to grind off a particular enemy, so you fight this one, and it warps you up here. Now you've got to go through a few screens and do it again. Um, which I guess would de-incentivize getting a ton of money by fighting the same thing over and over, but eh. Um, another problem is it could also be used as a shortcut to skip stuff, because uh, depending on how I have an area set up, like let's say there's like a big canyon like covering this whole part of the map and you can't cross it but um if you go like way around this way there's like a way that leads over and like that's how you progress through the area well um 
So let's say you start on this side, you fight this enemy, you warp to here, well now you've bypassed that. So I'm gonna have to keep, like, terrain in mind when doing this, make it so you can't, like, skip ahead in an area. Um, that would be kind of annoying. The other possible thing I could do is, uh, have them all lead to a common screen that isn't part of the normal map. Um, have it be kind of like a warp zone type of thing. And then, uh, for each one of these, like, in the warp zone, it'll be the classic three-stair warp setup, where you pick a staircase and it can take you to multiple locations. And then I'll have the destination points for those located near the enemies, but not on the same screen, and have every one of them be, like, a one-way. So, um, like, let's say you go to this screen normally, and there's, like, a cave entrance here, but there's like a boulder in front of it that you can't get you can't get rid of so you can't get into the staircase but if you come out of it then you can hit a button to get rid of the boulder and now it's active as like a quick warp so it's basically your reward for beating the enemy is now you kind of have fast travel like I could do something like that I wasn't planning on it but I don't know, I could. Uh, like I said, just kind of let me know what you think, I guess, um, what option seems the best. And I may take it into account, or I might just kind of do my own thing like I usually do. But uh, I figured I'd mention that, because in the last one I said I had this idea, and now I know it doesn't work, so yeah. That's about it.